Welcome back, everyone, and thank you so much for your support. We really appreciate it on board Tangroa. Last week, we were at Port Browning, and we joined a cruising club. We had so much fun doing a meetup. This week, it's off to Winter Cove. Hey, everyone, and welcome to our crazy life on board Tangroa. Two years ago, we decided it was time for our family to move on to a boat, but not just any boat. 1969 aluminum trawler that needed a lot of work. Of course, being the crazy people we are, we decided we could do the whole refit ourselves. I personally am surprised that we're not divorced yet and that our kids have not disowned us. But soon, Tangaro will be ready for our trip around the world. We hope our adventures inspire you to live each day with laughter and appreciation. Visit us at onboardtangaroa.com for early access to ad-free videos. So what do you think about our new intro? We would love some feedback. Just comment below. So where are we heading to now, Captain Blaine? Winter cold. Winter cold. We just left. I don't know where we were either. Wait, wait, wait. Poor Browning. <laughs> so Winter Cove is a nice protected area. It's actually, well, it's actually up here. Big cove in here. Um, this is Saturna Island. But to get in, you've got to go around and through. It's quite protected, and that's where we're heading to for the night. So straight in front of us is Irish Bay, but we're going to go around these rocks right here. You can see them these. This is the rock reef. You got to go around. So we're going to go around it and pop in to there. And that's Winter Harbor. So I think we all slept pretty well last night though. I think we drink too much. I never sleep when I drink. Not that much. That much beating like four ciders. If you look straight over there, that's the park where you dock your tender. And this is a little boat channel that gets you out towards um, towards Vancouver, actually. So this is perfect. This boat, I don't know if you can see it. It's right there, the big power boat. Uh, Lane spun so much. Hold on. Go over here. That boat. The Jenny 66, they're just heading out, a lifting anchor. So we're like, let's just take their spot. It looks perfect for us. They're 66 feet, we're 78. It's about the same. So we're just waiting until they haul a banker. Where are they? There they are. We're just waiting until they haul a banker and then we're just gonna plunk ours right down where they are. It's perfect. Megs for a walk. First right, thing after baby? anchoring is you've got to get yeah. the dog to shore. Hey Megs, we're gonna go this way. It's a beautiful walk. Oh, look at the boardwalk lane. This is one of those salt marshes. What did it say? A good view of Winter Cove though. Again, this is Saturna Island, a couple Canada geese over there. That is definitely a salt marsh there. All the white on the sides, it's gotta be salt. Nice little trail through here. Like, look at it, it's bulrushes. Beautiful little swamp. They're bulrushes. First time Tangaro has been here. We've been here before, but we were on our time. The first time Tangaro has been here, Blaine. And of course we had to check out the boat channel. I was so going to conquer that thing the next day. I think what I like about the Gulf Islands National Park Reserve is all of the signs that they have everywhere educating us. So right now we're looking at a sign right now and it says we are on the geographic center of the Salish Sea. These waters and adjacent lands are the traditional homeland of the Coast Salish nations. For millennia, Coast Salish people have traveled throughout this place to maintain family ties, harvest resources, and trade. While it's difficult to estimate the population of this area before colonization, between 50,000 and 150,000 people may have lived here, 
Oral histories suggest that the Coast Salish Sea provided well for all of their children. Now, over 3 million Canadians and 4 million Americans live here. Our connections may be hidden by our globalized lifestyles, but we are all children of the Salish Sea. With 7 million kids and counting, Mom needs a little more help around the house. <laughs> and their saying is, the Coastal First Nations saying is, when the tide is out, the table is set. That's cool because we've been living on prawns and everything, and fish and crab. And let me show you some pictures here. So tide's out and here's some Coast Salish kids out there harvesting. And there it is, the Coast Salish Sea. And after a quick walk with Maggie, it was time to head back to Tangaroa for a sundowner in prawns. The neat thing about prawns, you guys doing a tanger one? No. Okay. I can do a tiger no, one. Yeah, I didn't know this. So we got two different prawns here. You got the tanger and the spotted. So this is a tanger one. That's a spotted. Oh, yeah. But peel the tanger. I did not know this. I will peel the tiger. I know I don't say tanger right. I'm sorry. Look at okay. Oh, the meat is striped too. So just as a comparison. Oh, peel the spotted. They're all going to be butter flavored, so. Mm. I did not know that. I learn something new every day. You? Absolutely. You can tell it's a smoky sky with this sun right now. Follow the sunshine right to our belly. Watching sunset, roasting marshmallows. Go Blaine. And drinking hot chocolate and berries. I think it is. That's why I wanted to try and capture this amazing sun. Look at it. Backwards, right there. Oh, orange. And after some hot chocolate and baileys, it was the perfect time to go for a sunset paddle. Maggie and I wanted to go check out Church this Cove. Church Cove. Sorry, this is Church Cove that we're just cruising into. It's kind of coming to sunset, but it's really smoky right now, so you just can't see the sun. Maggie's with me on the board. This is only her second time paddleboarding, so she's getting kind of used to it. And supposedly in here is the old church. There's now a boathouse or something, so we're just taking a cruise in to see what we can find. With you, everything's complete. Do you know how much I love you? I put your favorite song on. Look at the old church. Oh, that's beautiful. I can't help but feeling just loving this moment. And after finding the church, it was time to head back to Tangaro for a great night's sleep. The next morning, Brian and I took off to conquer the boat channel. This might just push us right through. Yeah. Here we go. Are you ready for the ride? Stay in the middle. Woohoo! We might have to go faster speed on the way back. Yeah. Woohoo! It's just tossing the tender around. Okay, I'm going sideways now. Usually the boats come through here full speed. There was a boat behind us and he actually didn't realize that we were going through the channel a little bit slower. So he had to do a quick Yui and then come in again. Then Brian and I decided to do a little gunk holing on one of the little islets just no. outside of the boat channel. No. I don't even know what type is this. Is like a bay salt? I have no clue. 
what type of rock it is that makes these holes. It's all over Hornby, too. Like, that neat. The designs, like veins. The seals love to tease Maggie. <laughs> and then it was time for the roller coaster ride back through Boat Channel. After a fun-filled morning, it was lunchtime, and then Blaine and I headed on shore with Maggie for a quick walk yeah. before heading back to our mooring ball. One of our favorite things is to do a little bit of beach combing. They're like inflated. They get little air bubbles in them. I think you could eat this stuff. I think you could eat this stuff. I want to get a book about seaweed that you can eat. Yeah, I need an edible seaweed book. If anyone knows of such a book, can you just pop it in the comments for us? It's like a little animal. Hello, little girl. This is what we need to do today. Let's go play. We can swing. I can see why the kids use this as a whip. It's kind of cool how the oysters attach itself. This would have been an oyster here, and that's just the bottom shell left. These are all barnacles, and there's little creatures in them. When they're alive, if you press on them, they push in. There's little beaks here, they come out. Sorry, I'm scavenging, looking around. Beach combing. Right. Oh, look at them all. See them all? Those are all little crabs. Here's a little one here. We'll put it back for them. They have lots. Let's go under this one, ready? There they are. All the little crabs. Maggie found a little fish. And poor little dude. I'm and then we were honored to meet a Wasanej First Nations girl who was hired by BC Parks. She took the time and helped us learn how to pronounce the words of her language. Oh, you're going to have to help me with this one. That one is Slalom. Slalom? Slalom. Swordfern. Slalom. Swordfern. I'm important in Wasanek. Wasanej? Kusanej. Kusanej. I'm going to say it right now. To say it once more. Kusanej. Kusanej. Ceremonies and pit cooking. We just left Winter Cove and we're actually going to go north around and go to the other side of Winter Cove. So this is Samuel Island on our right and this is Lizard Island. There is actually a little house on Lizard Island. There's a couple. Um, I don't know about Samuel Island. I've got to find a little bit of history on Samuel Island. There's a couple houses on the south end but it doesn't seem very populated. But we're just passing through this little pass here. So I'm just reading about Samuel Island. It is at a very, very private island. There's actually a caretaker on there and he patrols the island and makes sure that no one passes the high tide mark. And the owners, what they're doing is they're really trying to protect their island, especially from wildfires and, and to preserve the natural beauty of it. Somebody said there's actually a sign there that says rattlesnakes do not pass or beware, which I think is hilarious. Um, Samuel Island, Horton Bay, Lizard Island, just passing through there. And we're actually going to go through this little entrance here, go around the northern tip of Samuel Island, then come down the far side and we'll be kind of between Samuel Island and um, Saturna and mainland. It seems that these channels we're going through are very narrow. However, you have to remember these are fjords. We are glacial, so they're extremely deep. We're just looking at Samuel Island on the right, and there is a sheep on the beach. So we're looking at our radar here, we're coming up Temple Channel. We're like, look, you can see boats on the other side. 
But there's no way because these ones just hit the island down here. About to leave, already packing. Come with me, I'm not really asking. We'll get away to a place where we don't know. And after filling up with water at Mill Bay, we hooked onto our mooring ball and we were home.